Good morning and welcome into this space and time for prayer. I welcome you in the name of the risen Christ. He is the one that gathers us, brings us together, and gives us this opportunity to both hear his uh, revelation through scripture and also to experience him in prayer. We will st start off as we usually do this morning with a deep breath. And just let it out slowly. Now, just with your eyes closed for a second, just, just grasp onto a reality. That's the reality of that presence, that presence of Jesus Christ with us here at this moment. And we give thanks for, to God for bringing us together for this opportunity to, to hear his word and, and be part of it. So we say, you know, thanks be to God and let us go ahead and move on into our prayer. Let's pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love. Through your grace we proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 78, is verses 1 through 39. Let us listen to these words. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob. He appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimites, armed with a bow, turned back on the day of battle, they did not keep God's covenant, but refused to walk according to his law. They forgot what he had done and the miracles that he had shown them. In the sight of their ancestors, he worked marvels in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through it, and made the water stand like a heap. In the daytime, he led them with a cloud, and at night along with a fiery light. He split rocks open in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made the streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. And they spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? Even though he struck the rock so that the water gushed out and torrents overflowed, can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard, he was full of rage. A fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger mounted against Israel because they had no faith in God and did not trust his saving power. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He set, sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens. And by his power, he led out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp all around their dwellings, and they ate and were filled, for he gave them what they craved. But before they had satisfied their craving, while the food was still 
in their mouths, the anger of God rose against them, and he killed the strongest of them and laid low the flower of Israel. In spite of all this, they still sinned. They did not believe in his wonders. So he made their days vanish like a breath and their years in terror. And when he killed them, they sought for him. They repented and sought God earnestly. And they remembered that God was in was their rock and most high God, their redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths. They lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward him. They were not true to his covenant. Yet he, being compassionate, <coughs> forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Often he restrained his anger and he did not stir up all his wrath. He remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes and does not come again. This is Psalm 78, verses 1 through 39. Israel remembering its beginning, and Israel remembering how it continues to fail God by forgetting what God has done for them. How often have we done the same things? We fail sometimes to remember what God has done. And this is a reminder of all the good things that God has done for these, these people. A gospel reading is the gospel according to Luke. It's chapter 20, verses 19 through 26. <clears throat> when the scribes and the chief priests realized they had told this parable against them, they wanted to lay hands on him at that very hour, but they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be honest in order to trap him by what he said, so as to hand him over to the jurisdiction and authority of the governor. So they asked him, Teacher, we know that you are right in what you say and teach, and you show deference for no one, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is lawful for us? Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But he perceived their craftiness, craftiness and said to them, Show me a denarius, whose head and whose title does it bear? And they said, The emperor's. He said to them, Then give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were not able in the presence of the people to trap him by what he said. And being amazed by his answer, they became silent. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So we got this, this meeting between Jesus and these those who are trying to trap him, these scribes and chief priests. They, they want to trap Jesus and, and have something against him in order to, but Jesus answers their question wisely. He does it because he understands where their question came from, and he understands the, the assumptions that they had. And I think that's the way we need sometimes to address the rest of the world, because primarily the powers and principalities want to stump us and have something to convict against us. But if we consider what their assumptions are and get to the root of their question, then we can answer them wisely and they cannot refute us. So things to think about this day. Let's go ahead and go to prayer here. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, show us your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. We pray for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We pray for this day and are going into it. Bless the labor of our hands and minds so that they may add to your glory. May our every step and action be a witness to our love for you and for our neighbor.
We pray for this community, for the nation and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. We pray for reconciliation, for hate and violence to be banished from this land. We pray for Reliance and Writings Chapel Charge, for the Virginia Annual Conference, for our Bishop Sharma Lewis, for the Global United Methodist Church, and for all your churches that witness to your glory. We pray that all who profess and confess themselves to be Christians may be led into the ways of the truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. We pray for our world as we enter a new time of challenges with the COVID-19 pandemic, for those who have led through this crisis, for the doctors and nurses who have been in the front lines, for those who are suffering with the virus, for those who have lost loved ones in this long night of pandemic. We pray for our world as time of challenge in the face of the social unrest brought on by divisiveness, systemic racial injustices, and hatred for the other. We pray for all of those who are peacemakers and for those who seek to end injustices. We pray for children, youth, and young adults growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. May they find your path, Lord Jesus, and lead them away from the false promises of the world. We pray for your mercy on those of our families and communities whose increasing years have brought them weakness, distress, or isolation. Help us to be their helpers and caretakers. Increase their faith and assurance of your love. We also pray for forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive all our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now let us, as people of God, pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
and give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, what a joy to be with you this morning in this time of hearing scripture read and God's revelation coming into our hearts and having this opportunity to raise our voices and be in communion with God. Thank you for being here. I pray that God will be with you this day. Let's continue to take care of each other. Let's serve God as best we can each and every day. Thank you again. Let us go ahead and end in prayer here. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take care, my friends. God bless your journey today. May you have a pleasant and wonderful day. I'm glad to be able to share this time with you. And we will see you next time. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior.